What's up everyone, Mike here. So down in the Mushroom Lab today, cool video for you guys. I want to say too, Happy New Year, all right? So for everybody who's tuning into this video, Happy New Year. Thank you so much for subscribing, watching my videos this year. Uh, it's really been a pleasure to make these things for you and I'm just super stoked for this upcoming year going forward because I'm just gonna make more videos, better videos, the grow room is up and running, so you guys are really going to get to see me grow some mushrooms on this channel, some awesome ones. Um, so just thank you all so much. And I want to say uh, right now, too, today is the last day to enter for my subscriber giveaway. So if you have not entered yet, click down in the description box below and check out that video so you can enter in this month's subscriber giveaway because I will be announcing the winner tomorrow morning, actually. So get your entries in by tonight at midnight Rocky Mountain time. And what I'm giving away is a master pack of my liquid cultures. Basically the commercial strains that I like to grow the best. They're my highest performers. And uh, so you guys will really enjoy the master pack. I'll just say too, they will be available for purchase soon on my website. I've been working on the website off and on a little bit and it's coming together. So I'm about done with it and it's about to go live. So stay tuned for that. And you guys will be able to get more cultures from me in the future and just purchase them off the website if you'd like. I want to say, I'm doing these giveaways monthly, so if you don't get a chance to win, uh, if you didn't win this month or whatever, you know, just enter next month and you'll have another opportunity. I'll also be adding in merchandise, like I just put in a sample order for some shirts and some hoodies, stuff like that, so I'm just waiting on that to come in and then I'll uh, let you guys know all about that. I'm considering also adding in a free phone consultation again to the subscriber giveaway options, so uh, maybe next month I'll add that in, but this month it's just culture, so... Anyway, get in that subscriber giveaway, get your entry in, so you got, get a chance to win some liquid culture. Now, today's video, what we're going to talk about is liquid culture. How long does liquid culture actually last? Okay, so like a cultivator like me, if I make it, or if you make it yourself, how long is it actually viable, and can you actually use it yet? So that's what we're going to go over today. Are you guys ready? Let's get it. All right, everyone, so we have two liquid cultures right here. They are the same species, the exact same strain. One of them is just really old, and the other one's brand new. Here is the Petri dish that I made just to test the viability of the culture, just to prove that, hey, this is a good culture to show you guys. And let's talk about this a little bit. Which one is the old one, and which one is the new one? Well, I'll tell you right now, the old one is that really dark orange one on the left, and it's over five years old. Okay, now, so to start off this video, how long does a liquid culture last? And I'll say they can last years, all right? So I've got two of them right here, all right, that I just kind of showed you guys a little clip of. And I want to tell you how old each of these cultures are, okay? So I have this, this one that is dark orange, all right? And that's, that's the old one, all right? And then I have that other one that's kind of clear looking. And then, bam, right there we got the Petri dish, okay? So it's chicken of the woods, all right? This is a Latiporus sulfurius. And I want to say I had these uh, syringes, those cultures, those orange ones. They were in storage. I have had those for over five years now, okay? And I just built this new farm here in Colorado, okay? Um, and boy, it's, it's, been a, it's been a task. But as I was going through all my stuff and kind of getting things organized here this year when I started kind of popping the cultures off, getting everything growing again, I found that old bag of syringes. And I was like, oh my God, I remember making it um, in one of my old basement farms years ago, okay? And I couldn't believe I had it, first of all. And then what came to my mind was, man, I should just test it and just see if it's still good, all right? So what did I do? I actually put some on grain, okay? I put some on Petri dishes, and then I just straight up made some LC with it, all right? And let me tell you something over five years old and it worked okay it was still good i tested several of them just for fun and yeah dude they were still good so a liquid culture can potentially last years and i'll talk to you guys about how i had it stored all that good stuff and i want to say my my actual recommendation okay like let's just say you were to purchase a culture from someone like me or another cultivator, or even you just made one yourself, like you cloned a mushroom and you decided to make some liquid culture yourself. Typically, I tell people to try to use that culture within one year, okay? 
and then you're for sure it's usually for sure always good okay i've never had any go bad actually in a time frame like that so if you use them within one year you're for sure good but this one back here five plus years okay so it was still good after five plus years i don't suggest keeping them that long like i said try to use them up within one year all right but that one lasted five years now uh, let's talk about storage and how to prolong storage. I also want to say um, spores. Okay, spores are different than culture, all right? And even the way you can potentially store your liquid culture can increase the shelf life or how long it's going to be viable for you. So first, let's just kind of talk about liquid culture before we even get into the aspect of spores. And I will have more videos in the future just on spores and making spore syringes, spore prints, all that good stuff. So subscribe to the channel uh, to check those out in the future if you have not seen those yet or you're interested in that. But anyway, as far as keeping a culture like that for five years, how did I have it stored? Honestly, I had them in the syringes, okay? So I don't keep, keep them stored, like let's just say a liquid culture jar, okay? This is a jar of liquid culture. Some guys do keep them stored in that, but me personally, I like to preload the syringes, okay? Put them in a bag, just like you see right here, okay? So that's the chicken of the woods, the OJ chicken, all right? And um, I just keep them in a bag like that. Now I wanna say that one that I had for five years, it stayed good for five years, I just had it stored at room temperature, okay? I had it stored at room temperature in a bag like that, in a tote, and uh, that's it, really. Um, I, I was actually truly shocked that it was still good. I knew it would probably be good, but I've never tested one that was five years old, you know? So I try to use them before then. But uh, yeah, it was still good, guys. Like I said, I don't suggest keeping it that long, but it worked. Now I wanna say, there's a couple different ways you can prolong the shelf life even more, all right, than just storing it at room temperature, you know, in a bag and then in a tote. You can actually refrigerate them and if you keep them in the refrigerator, it'll actually slow down the mycelial growth just a little bit and they can be viable even longer, all right? So I just wanna say you can actually refrigerate your cultures if you'd like to. I don't refrigerate mine, I really don't um, because I will either use them up in, uh, in time or sell them in time. But you can refrigerate. I will say for long-term storage, it's effective. It's very effective keeping them in a syringe like that. I'll even make videos for in the future for long-term storage of just storing it in sterile water because you can actually put a culture just in sterile water and that will even prolong it more, okay? Being in culture form, there's nutrients in that water, okay? So I've got like dextrose and malt in that water so that my psyllium can really feed and blast off. That way, when I do wanna use one of those syringes for cultivation or one of my customers uses one for cultivation, as soon as you inject it on that mycelium, within a few days, it is blasting off and that's what you want. But if you're wanting to store your cultures, maybe for long-term storage, and you're not really super concerned about the amount of nutrition in them, you can actually dial back the amount of nutrition you put in your liquid culture, like put a little less sugar in there, okay? And that will actually slow down pretty much the rate of uh, the mycelium's metabolism, and it's not going to age as quickly, and um, it'll just last longer with um, lower nutrients. Some people, like I said, they just store them in sterile water, and I'll show you guys how we can do that on this channel. So like I said, in order to maybe prolong the shelf life of your cultures, you can refrigerate them, you can lower your nutrient amount that's in the actual culture, or you could just put them straight up in sterile water. There are some strains I wanna say you don't want to refrigerate, okay? And just a few off the top of my head, like pink oyster, golden oyster. I had a, uh, another one, Pleurotus tuber regium, I believe is the name of that one but it's the oyster mushroom that actually uh, forms truffles, all right? None of those, uh, that's a warm weather strain. Basically, your warm weather tropical strains do not like to be refrigerated, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, it, can, it can straight up kill the mycelium, right? So pink oyster, golden oyster, Pleurotus tuber regium, those are the ones just off the top of my head that I would say do not refrigerate if you're cultivating these mushrooms. All right. Now, one thing I wanna talk about too that I said we were gonna talk about in this video was spores, all right? How long can you actually store spores, whether it's in a spore syringe or maybe it's a spore print? It's one of the best ways to save your genetics is taking spore prints. And I just wanna say, you can store spores even longer, okay? So spores can potentially last 
10, 15, maybe 20 years, all right? So um, I've personally never kept any that long. If any of you guys that are su uh, subscribed to this channel have stored spore prints or spore syringes that long, let me know. Let me know what's like the oldest spore syringe you've ever used. And even like culture, if you guys have used like some really old cultures, this was like the record for me, a five-year-old plus culture, okay? So if any of you guys have um, had any liquid cultures super long too, let me know. Let me know how long you've had your culture stored and used them and they were still viable. All right, everyone, so that was my recommendation on basically how long liquid cultures last, how soon you should use them, storage, all that good stuff. So I hope you guys all found this helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, but that's all I got for you on this one. Happy New Year's, everyone, and I will catch you on the next one.